And I can't help but wonder what really happens next with that trend out of cities and into the suburbs. Might it snap back in some places stronger than some people expect? Because the economy really needs cities, at least certain cities in America, right? Well, yeah, I think, you know, these things kind of ebb and flow. But, you know, the longer the shock period, the longer the recovery period. This is true of any kind of black swan event or any major event. In this case, you know, this pandemic's been upon us for now over a year, and the behavior will continue through the course of 2021, where you have people that are just tired of being cooped up in their small apartments in the cities or moving out uh, to try to get more space and so forth. And you see the office space in the inner cities. You see it right in Manhattan, uh, just not being occupied at all. And there is an incredible drop in, in prices as the supply has come back on the market. So, you know, just like it was in the 60s and 70s, where there was a, a move from the urban to the suburban areas, it's happening again. The question is whether it's going to stick this time, because I think once we get through the crisis, once office is open, you're not going to have 100 percent remote work. You're not going to have exactly the way we had it. You're going to have somewhere in between. So I think there's going to be office space opened up, but it's still going to then uh, be more convenient to be in cities and so forth. So I think you'll see an ebb back over the course of 2022, 3, 4. But for the time period now, uh, urban centers are clearing out. And that's why I wonder where the opportunity is, because is the culture really going to shift to the suburbs? Those restaurants, are they going to shift? What's the economic behavior going to be now versus what we've seen in the past? Like the, the landlords who maybe wouldn't negotiate with those restaurants, they have to shut down. Are those restaurants going to move to the suburbs to reopen, or are they just going to get now a better deal from that landlord and reopen in the city? Yeah, it's going to be a combination of the two. Remember, lease terms uh, matter in here as well. So on office lease terms, you've got 10-year, 20-year terms in a lot of cases. So, you know, people have their hands tied. They are negotiating uh, lower prices, and, and landlords are playing on this. When you get to restaurants and these, you know, cafes and lunch places, they're shorter-term leases, and so they have the ability to move more. I don't look, uh, you know, there's been a lot of mobile stuff happening, you know, kiosks, pop-ups, that, you know, that sort of thing, which don't require... <laughs> Uh, any real estate, uh, or, or at least uh, only minimal. So I think that you're going to see more ebb and flow on these very small businesses. And I think, you know, that's why when you look at consumer confidence and CEO confidence, you see differences. CEO confidence is at a 17-year high, driven by large companies. The smaller company CEOs, Main Street, is a little more reticent. And, you know, consumer confidence, while it's rebounding, it still is behind. You know, it's been down since the start of the pandemic. It's on it by a third. So I think all of this goes into the to the uh, the mantra that it's going to take us a long time to really get back where we were. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.